Hi, I'm Jason Chichi, and we're here at the 2023 Movie Maker Movies premiere. And I'm here with Max, who's about to see his movie on the big screen. How do you feel, Max? Like I'm on top of the world, baby. Are you excited to see yourself? You were the only actor in your film. What do you think it's going to be like to see yourself, just you, in a three-minute film all by yourself? I mean, to be honest with you, um, it's going to feel a bit different, uh, like I'm the like I'm a lone uh, soldier in my own film. But still, this is the first time I've ever acted in a film. Well, you did a great job, so we're excited to see you on the big screen. Uh, I'm here with Caitlin, and we're going to ask Caitlin, um, what was the most fun part of doing Movie Maker? The movie you were in, or the movie that you directed? Actually, it was the movie that I filmed, Popcorn. Ah, uh, you were the cinematographer. Yes, I was. And what was fun about that? Um, it was a lot more hands-on. I had to hold the camera instead of just having it up and filming, and I had to follow different people and get a lot of different angles that I was not used to doing, so it was really fun and really exciting. Do you think you're going to make more movies? Definitely. All right, we're going to look for you on the big screen. Sounds good. Thanks for being here. I'm happy to be here. Today I'm excited to see the movie that I directed because it's it's been a while and I'm excited to see how it turned out. Um, and what was your movie about? My movie is about an actress who's about to go on stage and perform, but she has a nervous breakdown five minutes before she's supposed to go on stage. Is it autobiographical? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I have had something like that happen to me. I don't think it was specifically about like acting, but I've been in situations where I've been nervous for something and ended up freaking out and making it just worse for myself. So that was your inspiration for writing the movie and then finally putting it up on the screen? Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and when you saw the dressing room, that's what sort of sparked the idea? Yeah. Just... It's great how places can inspire storytelling ideas. It is very great. Well, welcome. We're so excited that we're going to be showing your film and we hope you continue to make more. Ella, first let me say you look lovely today. Are you excited to be here for, for the uh, premiere? Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, are you excited? Which, which movie are you excited to see that you worked on? Uh, probably the one I directed, the, the therapy one, the session I think it was called. Um, yeah, so did, what did you enjoy most about uh, doing Movie Maker? Um, I liked being able to see how the process of making a movie works because I didn't, didn't, I didn't know very much about making a movie beforehand. And I liked being able to, I got to shoot some of the scenes, I think of the popcorn one, I really liked doing that. Uh, do you think you're going to make more movies? Uh, yeah, probably. Do you have any ideas? <laughs> no, not yet. Maybe today will inspire you to write a movie about a movie premiere. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Has anyone been here before? Yeah? Oh, that's right. so great. Great to see you. I know you have. I know you've been here before. We've seen you before already. Right? Um, um, so my name is Natalie, executive director here at the venue. So we, you may have noticed we started our live season, so um, look for all kinds of shows here from the two-time U.S. Poet Laureate Billy Collins coming to Fran Leibowitz, Average White Band, all kinds, Edward McCain, all kinds of music and uh, talk events, educational events, and of course films. So this is the first Movie Maker event, so this is our first summer program, so thank you for being part of it, all, all aspiring filmmakers who are now real filmmakers. And we could not be more grateful to our partner, Jason Chichi, who's gonna come out in a second, and here in the program. And he will thank everyone else involved in the program. I'm sure I'll leave that to him. But thank you for being part of this. Please come back to the theater. And we hope to run this program for, for many years to come. So without further ado, you all know him, the director of the program, Movie Maker Program, Jason Chi Chi. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. And welcome to the premiere screening of our 2023 Movie Maker Movies. There's so many people to thank. Um, I especially want to thank the administrative staff here at the SHU Community Theater. Matt, Maureen, Gary, Joe, Madison, 
Lisa, and of course Tim Walsh, who is here with us every day, providing us with our technical needs. Thank you so much. Every one of you are incredible. I also want to thank our instructors, including our on-camera acting coach and my partner in crime, Jack Berner. Our guest artist, uh, Tony Award-winning actor, Katie Huffman. And uh, instructors in the School of Communications, Media, and the Arts on the SHU campus, professors Brian Hogan, Greg Golda, and grad assistants Tomas and Elise. We could have not done it without you. <laughs> I also want to thank our movie makers who came to the program every day, Woo! excited to learn, <laughs> respecting each other, and with a collaborative spirit that is essential when making movies. You guys are awesome. I love working with you. <laughs> so I want to just tell you briefly how Movie Maker works. It's a three-part program that happens conveniently in three weeks. Our first week is pre-production, where our filmmakers are taken on a tour of this building. Uh, that includes the lobby, the box office, the concession stand, the, the bathrooms, the stage, the balcony, backstage, the administrative offices, the dressing room, the, even the basement. And th this tour has nothing to do with real estate. It's about sparking story ideas. So once we give them a little time to think about it, then we build their ideas into a script using professional screenplay software. Once the stories are on the page, they use their acting training in an audition and our films are cast, which brings us to our second week, production. After brief workshops in shot lists and storyboarding, then we get to the nitty gritty of shooting our films. Each filmmaker performs a different job on a different film. This could be actor, director, cinematographer, gaffer, sound recordist, production assistant. All of this is to assure that they really experience what it's like to be on a real film set from many different points of view. Once our stories are in the can, then we go to the third week, which is post-production, which happens at the Martiri Building on the SHU campus. After workshops in editing software and sound design and music selection, then they put together the movies you're gonna see today. Except there's one that did not make it, I'm sorry to say, it was exported incorrectly. We're gonna show it in front of another movie here, maybe sometime this fall. Um, but stay tuned for more information on that. Um, uh, also, we have an extra bonus. Uh, Professor Greg Golda, the last week of our last session, uh, produced a movie maker podcast in which our filmmakers sat down and talked about the films that influenced them and what their experience at Movie Maker was like. So we're going to show that to you, and then you'll get to meet our movie makers with a brief Q&A. Um, before we show you the goods, though, I want to offer more thanks to the movie maker parents who encouraged and afforded the opportunity for their teenagers to learn more about telling stories on screen. I've always thought of storytelling as a philanthropic sort of endeavor where you can make people laugh, cry, learn. I hope that we've inspired your movie makers to make more movies. It's been my pleasure and privilege to work with every single one of them. So uh, with no more further ado, the 2023 Movie Maker Movies. First question is to Ella. There's Ella. There, hi Ella. Um, so Ella, so you and Stephen worked together, um, and you edited uh, uh, the film together. You seem to have a good working relationship. Can you just explain to us what was that experience like working with Stephen and editing a film together? Uh, I had never really edited uh, anything really before. Um, it was. I didn't really know what to expect coming in, but it was actually a lot of fun. And I it really looked like you guys it. were having a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Um, I feel like we had different like ideas of what we wanted to do, but in the end, we kind of uh, like, operated. Yeah, you can like pick and choose which ideas you think are best yeah. for the story. Yeah. But you guys seem to get along really well and had a fun time doing it. Great. And uh, um, I think that film came out really well, too. Um, Caitlin. All the way down there. Hi, Jason. Um, hi, Caitlin. Uh, you seem to have fun acting and directing in the film. Do you like acting or directing more? Um, I like them both. 
Uh, acting for me was fun because I got to throw water on Vincent. That was a fun day. It was a great day. How many times did we do that? I think we did it like three times. I thought we only did that. Well, we once. practiced it three times. Yes, with no water. Uh, so, do you think you'll do any more acting or more directing? Um, I definitely would probably still do acting, but I really liked directing more because you kind of have a vision and then you can like try to make it come to life. And awesome. I like that. Good. We need more female directors. So do it for us. Yes. Um, Brenna. Where's Brenna? Hi, Brenna. <coughs> Brenna, how did the shot list make it easier for you to shoot the movie that you had in your head? So, um... Brenna's movie was, um, the one called Five Minutes Till, um, uh, Five Minutes Till... Five Minutes Till Places. Five Minutes Till Places, where Natalie where, where, where had a breakdown. So the shadows made it so much easier because I had so many ideas. Everything was kind of like all over the place. I remember that uh, the script that I had for myself, I had highlighted like everything I had written in almost all of the margins. It was so much, and there was absolutely no way that I could have ever shot everything that I wrote down there. And if I hadn't written down like the most important stuff that I wanted, I just had it all in my head, I would have been a complete scatterbrain and I wouldn't have gotten anything done. And it would have been a very long movie. Oh yeah, it would. <laughs> so, so it helps you to pick and choose the best parts of what you wanted to show. Yes, it does help. Well, it came out great. Congratulations on that. Uh, which brings us to Natalie. Hi. Hi. So I, I want to ask you this. How did your film change from what you first envisioned? Natalie's movie was Popcorn, the last movie where the where poor Tiernan just got sucked up by the theater. Um, so my film started out, I don't know, it was really complicated when I wrote it. And um, you helped me narrow it down a lot because it was kind of way too much. But um, it was inspired a lot by like Twilight Zone and that kind of horror film type thing. Um, and I think I just anticipated that I would be able to throw in a lot more parts and just a lot more shots than are really possible. Like the, the scene where Tiernan was on the floor like hysterically laughing, um, I thought there were going to be a ton of shots there and that ended up just being like a seven minute continuous shot and I did a bunch of jump cuts. Um, but I originally thought that that was going to be like five different angles. Well, then you realize that you don't necessarily need all the things that you thought of in your head to tell the story you want to tell. Yeah. So Sometimes more is more, but it's not needed, right? Yeah. I think you did a great job paring down what we really needed to know for the story. Yeah. And leaving just enough ambiguity to know what happened to that poor boy. <laughs> uh, well, it turned out great. Congratulations. Tiernan. Where's Tiernan? Hi, Tiernan. So, I want to know this. Did your film come out the way you saw it in your head? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, not only, it, it changed quite a bit throughout the process. Um, like, there were a few little, um, this practical change, I realized that would not, we need like 10 different shots with that read on. Um, Tiernan's was after the fight with the two girls who just yeah. had a fight, with um, the plant between them. And I don't really know how I envisioned in my head. It was like a script I wrote. Like I remember, you really wanted the plant there. I really wanted the plant. I, oh, you know, my original. I remember really upset we cut this out. My the original script of that. I think about like a one minute sequence of just um, Ella talking to the plant by herself, as if it was her best friend. And I think that getting rid of that really, you know, I don't know. I think it, it was fine anyway. But I. <laughs> I, I, I don't really know what I was envisioning for it. I'm just, I, I'm very, I, I, I'm very attracted to sort of petty drama in that way. And I, maybe I spoke to some people. Well, you had something you wanted to say with that movie. Yeah, I, I did have something I wanted to say. It was about, you want me to, sure. what do you want to say? Sure. Uh, I, I guess I was trying to speak to sort of, um, you know, I think recently, um, my girlfriend had a, some sort of spat or something, and I was uh, that was on my mind. And I was thinking about, you know, what if people just like actually spoke to each other, and what if people had uh, a better ability to um, 
you know, realize when they've really done something wrong, because we all have this tendency to sort of, you know, be like, oh, I didn't actually, you know, I meant to do it this way and that way, but I think that I just, I don't know, I think I didn't write it very well, and that's all it was. And but you still, the, the seed of all movies is when someone has a thought like you, what if we, what if people just talked more? What if I read a situation where people, that's where all stories come from. So in that sense, it was a super success. Congratulations. I'm glad you think so. Thank you. I do. I definitely do. Okay, in that film was Morgan. Hi, Morgan. So Morgan, I know you didn't necessarily have an interest in acting. First of all, I should say, most of the people on this stage did not have an interest in acting in a film. But um, we thought it was an imperative thing that they learned to do. Um, if you want to make movies, it's great for you, if you're going to be a writer, director, to know what you're dealing with as far as the chess pieces you're moving around, which is your actors. So for them to get the experience of working with Jeff Gurner and for him to explain what's important as an actor only helps them as a director. So um, I know that you didn't have any real interest in acting. But you did so well in the film, so um, did you enjoy acting in the film? It was, it was definitely interesting. I mean, we took a lot of shots. I had to say the same words over and over again. And they would stop and they'd be like, oh no, can you do this? Can you try like that? Can you get it more emotion, less emotion? And we tried our best. We definitely had some fun together. We definitely got to laugh around between sets. But I think overall it came out really well. I agree. Will you do some more? Will you do some more acting? Um, probably. Good. All right, give it a shot. Why not? You never know. In this business, you never know. Uh, Vincent. Where's Vincent? Hi. So Vincent actually had made films before he came to Movie Maker, so I'm just curious, um, what more did you learn from Movie Maker that has been helpful? In all honesty, it's very stressful. <laughs> that is very true. Uh, filmmaking can be very, very stressful. Uh, do you think you'll learn how to manage the stress better a little the next time you go to make a movie? Yeah. I mean, the movies I've made are like student videos. It's like one and done. It's like. Actually, I thought they were pretty complicated and they came out great. Yeah, but it's not like as. It's very low budget, and like, I just, we call that indie filmmaking. <laughs> at the time, I just make it up as I go along, and one of the things you said is that we try to get as much shots in one angle so that we don't have to move back to that angle. That's not how I do it because I don't have lights or anything. I just do that. What's the next line? It's over there. Okay, do right there. And uh, what's the next line? It's over there. Okay. Back over there? Okay. Right. Well, the organization of putting the shoot together is um, oh, it's a lesson for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, ho hopefully you learned that. Maybe the next time, they'll take a little of that with you, but uh, keep making movies because yours are great. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. Hello. Like I said, hello to you yet today. Hello. Um, so, there are many technical aspects involved in making movies. Which one was your favorite? I, I'm wondering if it might have been cinematography. Um, well, you got it correct. It's definitely the camera work, but it's probably one of my favorite areas to work in. Cause, Why is that? Uh, before the class, I've done a lot of uh, photography and videography, and I'm really passionate about that and hope to pursue it later in the future. But I was really excited to work with the cameras around here, which are obviously more expensive than the ones I have, but um, it was really fun to work with them. But now, you know, you're, you have, we all have cameras in our phones, so maybe you'll um, take a look and take a look through your phone a little bit different after yeah. what you learned about working with cameras. Great. Um, Max, where's Max? Hi, Max. What is up? What's up, Max? <laughs> Max, now that you've seen yourself on the big screen as the only person in Logan's film, having to do all that dramatic work, will he write it, will he not write it? How was it? What was the experience like for you, Max? Oh my gosh. It was 
legit awesome. I can't believe I was the only actor in the uh, in just this one film, me uh, that uh, Logan directed. And so you see, when you watch the film, did you see what your character was going through? Did you see the beginning, the middle, the end? His frustration. Yeah. And do you remember playing those moments? <laughs> yeah, but seriously though, it's been like. God knows how many, how many weeks, a uh, couple weeks I've done that. Yeah, so, but you like the experience of acting in movies, right? I loved it, and I'm hoping I can maybe act in the future, hopefully maybe uh, do the uh, Mustang Minute again at Fairfield <laughs> Ward. Shout out to Fairfield Ward! All right! Well, we love to have you here with me, Max. Thank you so much for, for being a part of it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. This was an incredible experience for me. Thank you for us for too. You yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Uh, Logan. Hey, Logan. Hey. So, Logan, I know you had a very specific idea in mind for your film, the, the film that Max started, in, incidentally. Um, so, I want to know, um, what did you learn about how to transfer the ideas you had into screenplay form? Uh, I learned that it is very difficult to uh, <laughs> transfer it. And I, 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 that's where I realized that a lot of things will change between it. So it's interesting taking like the script, then putting it into the storyboard, and then putting the storyboard into the film, and seeing how, how much it keeps, like little bits get chopped off and new pieces get added. So then by the time you edit the movie and put it together, it's, the, it's, it's largely the same story, but a lot of details have changed by that point. It's just a really interesting process. Yes, and I remember your first script had a lot of interior things that your character was feeling and everything, and then when you get it into script form, you notice it's not so necessary to yeah. have all of that so that your actor knows what to do, but gosh, it came out great. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Gus, where are you? Hey. Hi. Um, you, you didn't get to see um, Gus's starring role in a film called The Caper, um, but um, Gus was very re reticent to act in the film, even though he had a, a mask on for the entire <laughs> shoot. Um, but um, I know that it was uncomfortable for you, but you had seen the film, uh, not today, but uh, before. Did you find your performance effective when, we, when you finally watched the thing put together? No, not really. <laughs> um, what do you think you could have done better? Or what do you think a, an actor should do that's better? Just like, try harder. <laughs> you know, ironically, um, and I wish you all could have seen the film because it's about a, a bumbling burglar who doesn't really know what he's doing. And Max's reticence to act in the film actually added this really funny layer of, I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> and therefore made our burglar um, a source of a lot of humor. So there, it's just a lesson, and sometimes you get a happy accident with your actor. But um, uh, what, what part of movie making did you enjoy doing? Uh, I like directing and editing, that was cool. Yeah, you and Max edited together, and you guys also had a good chemistry when doing that, so great job. Um, and I want to see uh, your Oscar-winning performance one day. Um, Tristan. Hey Tristan. Hi. Hi. So, Tristan, you had some big ideas when we first talked about making uh, movies. Uh, from a producer's standpoint, what did you learn about uh, telling an on-camera story? Because uh, uh, from an indie filmmaker's point of view, because I know you had lots of big ideas about hostages and uh, we were going to have uh, some CSI people coming around. And for this, this indie producer thinks, that all sounds very expensive. <laughs> so what, what did you learn about making indie movies? Uh, probably learned about making movies kind of just like how hard it is. Yeah? And probably, like, I really didn't realize how hard it was to make movies. Like, now when I watch like, TV shows and movies, I realize how hard it is. Yeah, and how um, it takes a lot of organization, it takes a lot of talent, and a lot of times it takes a lot of budget. Yeah. 
Well, you did great. Uh, Courtney, someone's got to be down there. Hey, Courtney. Hi. Um, so you had also made a film before. Um, what more did you learn about filmmaking that you didn't know the first time around? Um, so with filmmaking, because um, I did it at my filmmaking class at Trouble High, there, you know, we didn't have lighting. We just had the camcorders. It wasn't like we had all the stuff that we did. Um, and there was just, when I did all of it, it was just so much, doing the boom mic the first day. My arms hurt really bad afterwards, like for days. The boom mic is not for the weary. <laughs> it's not. Um, and uh, just having, like I said in the podcast, just doing all those different roles at once with the directing, gaffer, and just having to juggle all of that was, it was a lot. It's very helpful stuff to have all that equipment and everything. However, you can still tell a story with a phone. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, good. Keep making movies. Uh, Aiden. This is Aiden Q. Hi, Aiden Q. Hi. So, Aiden, you're a fan of movies. Um, did Movie Maker excite you to think of stories you might tell from your point of view? What kind of movies? Whatever I'm getting. Personal movies? Sure. Smaller movies, or do you, are you going to make horror movies, intergalactic movies? What kind of films do you think you might make? Like a, like a, a variety. Oh, a variety. Just different genres. And from maybe you'll learn, you've learned that uh, a good movie maker comes from a personal perspective. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I hope I look forward to seeing those. Um, and then ADP. Hello. Who's here today with us? And didn't think he was going to be able to be here with us. So we're thrilled that. Um, the Rain King. Um, so your story, uh, Aiden's film was The Box, um, in which the box, the scary box on the stage, we don't know what it was, we still don't know what it was. Um, but your story became more defined as we worked on it. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about how the final story came to be, what you settled on? Um, well, I didn't really know how to end it at first, and uh, I was writing it alone, and I was kind of like, I had, I knew I had this idea of like a box, and I had, we didn't want the audience to see what was in it, but uh, being around you guys kind of helped me out, like helped the finishing. Tristan actually kind of came up with the idea of him walking off the screen, and then, and I feel like a lot of the parts just came along the way with like the, uh, I kind of was like during the editing process, I found like a <coughs> screaming sound effect at the end, and I thought it was really funny. You know? When in doubt, end with a screen. <laughs> um, it came out great, though. Um, you think you're going to make more movies? I'd love to, yeah. Awesome. And, and you also discovered a love for acting. Yeah, um, I wasn't really sure what to think about it. I mean, when we first came in, I was a bit nervous about it. But I think by like the second day, me and Max were, uh, we were doing like a little scene from Ferris Bueller, and I thought, well, this is, this is pretty fun. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. You get to like, do your own thing on the camera. I like it. Well, we hope that you, well, I hope you all continue to, in some way, shape, or form, continue to tell stories, whether it's with movies or on the stage or on your phone, however you do it, because uh, you all have a point of view and we want to hear it. So, um, again, it was my pleasure working with each and every one of you. Um, I look forward to seeing what comes next for all of you. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Um, I hope that you'll tell other people about Movie Maker or that you'll attend some events here at the community theater. There's some great stuff lined up for the fall. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday.